Thank you, Chancellor, and thank you to all of those that are making this project uh, possible. Uh, I didn't bring a slide. Uh, it, it, this was really uh, something that was put together for us fast, and the invitation came from, from some of you in, 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 the, in the community, and, and that's usually the way that these projects really work. To give you a bit of background on my end, I've been in telecommunications for the better part of my life right out of high school. Uh, my professor said, you, you need to become an attorney, and he took off and started at a, a, a university in South Africa. I said, sure. I left and actually went to work in, in telecommunications. So I've been fortunate to see the changes that technology has had through all of the different uh, sectors of, of that environment. And I don't want to start talking to you about uh, megabytes, gigabytes, uh, data transfer, and everything else, because you'll get bored. Uh, and that conversation is probably better off to, to your engineers and network engineers, that is. But I've been able to see that impact that it had in my life as a student. Uh, it gave me an opportunity to provide for my family and provide well. So the students that are out there, technology, just don't do market development like I do. I, I love my job. <laughs> so, but that being said, as we sat yesterday, we talked about what is it that this community needs. In the last seven years, I've been working in fiber optics uh, infrastructure and uh, coax uh, development in certain areas of the city, both in Fresno and Visalia. And as I looked at the South Valley, I'm, and I'm passionate about what you guys do. I think, you know, I'm originally from Miami. I grew up in Miami. So it's a very different environment. To me, that's a very metropolitan city, has everything they need. But here I see how much work is needed for many of the companies that already provide infrastructure, particularly with some of the bigger ones that manage the, the the infrastructure that you now currently use. And as I sit in some of the chamber meetings and, and have conversations with the different uh, economic development teams from different uh, cities, one thing is always on their mind. We're always left behind. It doesn't seem like the companies want to invest any money in the infrastructure that they don't want to provide, even though we see there is a need. Three years ago, I saw that to be more of a challenge. Now that I'm with Vast. I'm very glad that I'm doing this project because it shows us what the impact of a government group with a private sector entity can make in a community. A vast network now services over 23 um, educational offices in the South Valley and, and, and other markets as well, uh, different colleges and universities, uh, police stations. Other entities that really needed security. And this particular uh, fiber optic infrastructure was built through a Recovery Act uh, grant, which makes it even easier for you to have access to that technology that now is in place. In fact, I'll tell you now, uh, we used a, uh, someone used a chart earlier to show that jet, right, a 10. We can deliver now, imagine nine times that speed. Imagine that jet being that nine times higher and we're only two miles away from you. So we're going to be moving in a direction where this conversation is going to be more real than it is just this panel today. Because Mike Stewart, who is our, our director of market development, and I invited him to come over, and you know, he, he managed to, to clear his schedule for that reason. Because this, to me, is very important. In fact, uh, uh, we met with Mrs. Pereira at the, uh, two weeks ago. There was an industrial summit. And all of the industrial people there are looking at technology. And one of the conversations of the week prior to that was, hey, so we have all this technology, all this software, all these things that we're looking at, but in the industrial park of Visalia and, and, and other areas of the cities, I developed that area. I'm telling you, I was only able to bring coax because fiber optics would have been just too much money. I mean, it was just crazy money. But now the conversation has changed. They're having to look at it and see that, hey, we really need this to be the base of operation if we're going to move towards that future. And so we went to that uh, summit, and this is how I'm here today. But i got to tell you, it takes you to be the ones to help us determine what are your needs. Because we may have the infrastructure that we can extend a network to you, but if we don't know you have that need, it, it's really hard for us to try to call everyone and say, well, what are the needs? Then? At the same time, we just had a meeting yesterday uh, with... Uh, John uh, Werner, and he's, uh, he directs the Board of uh, um, Adult Education in, in the South Valley as well. And so we, we sat down with about nine different school districts, and one of the challenges is exactly that. They don't have access where their students go home 
and they have to log into computers and they can complete this particular uh, curriculums that they have, in particular for the adults who are now having to go into a technology uh, center uh, to try to get these things done. So I look forward to continuing that discussion and I just don't want to bore you anymore when it comes to that technology side of things, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I know, I know for me as a father, you know, I'm already driving my children to, to be involved in technology. In fact, just before yesterday, I, I, uh, yesterday I dropped off my, uh, my paperwork for my son to be, become part of this uh, new curriculum that Clovis Unified has through, through a, uh, a new small charter program that he's going to be able to do robotics, engineering, writing code. And he's only 12 years old, and he's fascinated by it. You know, he's a high-functional autistic kid anyway, so we knew that just a normal way of teaching him wasn't working, so we took him to this environment, and he's now excited. Now, I read an article that AI is coming, and it's coming fast, but there's less than 10,000 people, or 700 billion people in the world, it's less than 10,000 people that actually understand it and even work in that technology. So you can imagine, young people, what you should be looking at. They're going to need an engineer. They're going to need, even now in the agricultural level, you're going to need someone who can manage that transition from wireless to point to point. We're able to deliver to you guys the fiber optics you need up to, at this point, 100 gigs, which is nine times more than what you saw in that jet. And again, we're two miles out, so we'll talk a bit more about it. All right, thank you.